A big thanks to designmybeat.com for sponsoring this video. They have a huge selection of sample-based software instruments and drum and beat sample packs inspired by real artists like Martin Garrix, Hardwell, Skrillex, Tiesto, Calvin Harris, and more. Check out Tomorrowland 3, their new 40 gigabyte collection of 10,000 new instruments, drums, and sound effects. This huge contact library is designed to instantly give you the inspiration you need to compose and produce your next big hit. Check out the links in the video description below for more info. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply mid-side processing with any plugin in Logic Pro 10. This goes for all of Logic's plugins as well as most third-party plugins. So in a previous video, I showed you how you can apply your processing in the linear phase and the channel EQs to the full stereo signal, the left only, the right only, the mid only, and the side only. Back in Logic 10.3, support was added for mid-side processing for all of Logic's plugins uh, when you load them in dual mono. So I'm gonna load this linear phase EQ in dual mono mode. So you get this extra little area up here where you can individually add a different EQ setting to the left channel versus the right channel. So it's like having two different EQs. And you can couple these as well. If you couple them, it applies it to both channels. Now see that that first adjustment I made was only applied to the left channel because I hadn't clicked the couple button yet. So that's cool, you can individually EQ the left and right channel, but you can also apply mid-side processing. So if I click right here, this will take you to another view where you can bypass the left and the right channel's EQ. So keep in mind, this just bypasses the plugin on the left and right channel. It does not mute the channel. So I'm gonna go down here and instead of stereo, I'm gonna select mid side. So if I click up here on mid again, now I'm seeing the EQ for the mid channel and then this is the EQ for the side channel. So you can have two different EQs. So mid side processing, if you're not familiar with it, essentially separates the center from the sides. So the mid channel is the center and the side channel is the sides, the, the far left and right material. So typically when you're doing mid-side processing, you want more of the mids and lows to be in the center, and then usually your sides will be more airy, it'll be more of your high frequencies. So typically that's the way it's done. And I'm using the linear phase EQ here because I have a musical example here that's fully mixed. I just want to apply some mid-side processing to it for mastering. So with my EQ reset, let's give this a listen. Okay, so I feel like I wanna hear more of like the cymbals and high end on the outsides. And also the center is kind of boomy. I wanna kind of clean up the mud in it. So one of the things that I mentioned before is that when you click here and you bypass these, you're just bypassing the effect, not the whole channel. So I wish there was a mute button for each one of these channels. There isn't, unfortunately. So what you have to do is use the other parameters that within the plugin that you're working in to isolate each one. So if I just wanna hear the mid channel, I can go to the side channel and pull the gain all the way down. Now, this isn't gonna completely mute it, but it's gonna get rid of most of the side channel so I can just focus in on the mid channel. Okay, so I pulled out uh, just below the 500 hertz range to, to cut some of the low mid-range mud, but I've also boosted 1K and 5K for a bit more mid-range and high-range presence, and I've also boosted the low end to reinforce the bass. So what I'm gonna do now is pull the gain on the mid-channel all the way down, go over to the side channel, and let's just focus on this one. So you can already hear that the material in this channel 
is mostly instruments that have not been panned center. These are elements in the mix that have been panned out to the sides and also stereo recordings like the overheads and things like that. So I cut a lot of the bass. There's no need for the bass to be in the sides. I did boost the mids a bit just to reinforce the guitars, which are panned left and right, and then added a bit of presence and a bit of a high-end boost. So now let me try blending these two together. So one of the things you'll notice with mid-side EQing is that as you increase the side channel or decrease the mid-channel, the mix will sound more diffuse and more. it'll have more stereo width to it. As you decrease the side channel, it'll be more dense, uh, more center heavy, and it'll be less wide. So one of the cool things here is you can go back and forth between the mid and side channel and you can balance these. So for mastering, you're not going to make huge adjustments uh, for EQ. Most of these, I'm boosting them or cutting them by no more than 3 dB. So there's not a huge difference between the before and after. But after adding this linear phase EQ in mid-side mode, the center has a bit more focus. The bass has been reinforced, as well as the high frequencies on the sides. And then the mid-high frequencies in the center just to bring out the vocals a bit. This can also be applied to individual channels as well. So here I have a stereo guitar recording, and I've got the channel EQ loaded up in dual mono mode. So I'll click here, switch this over to mid side, and now I can independently EQ the mid and sides. So again, I've got most of the high frequency content on the sides, and then I have more of the body and the bass in the center. So before it sort of had a boxy sound and I've taken out that boxy sound by cutting around the just below the 500 hertz range, boosting 1K just for a bit of mid range presence, boosting the bass in the mid channel, and then on the sides I've boosted the highs and cut the lows. So mid side processing is really, really common with EQs, but the great thing about this is you can load pretty much any plugin in Logic in dual mono mode and just switch it over to mid-side mode like I did before, and now you can turn that plugin into a mid-side compressor, for example. I can have two different compressors. I can compress the mid-channel separately from the side channel. The other thing that's great about this is it works with most third-party plugins as well. So for example, one of my favorite plugins for uh, compressing guitar is the API 2500 plugin from Waves. So I can load this up in dual mono mode, and I can click here, change it to mid side, and use it the same way as I've been doing with these other EQ plugins. Now I can have two different compressors, one for the center and one for the sides.
So here I've applied some compression to the mid channel with a pretty open attack time and a really slow release. And in the side channel, I've compressed this really heavily and I've pulled the attack time all the way down to control the transients on the sides. And then I'm using a quicker release time. So again, it's like having two separate compressors in one, one that's just focused on the center and one that's focused on the sides. You can even do this with reverbs. I've got chroma verb loaded up here. I'll switch this over to mid side mode. And what's cool about this is you could actually have two separate reverb types, like on the mid, maybe I want the room reverb, but on the sides, maybe I want the concert hall. So let me just start with the mid channel. So what I'll do on the side channel is pull the dry and wet sliders all the way down. So we just hear the mid channel. So maybe on the mid channel, I wanna hear mostly dry signal with a bit of the wet signal rolled in, but maybe on the side channel, I wanna hear mostly wet signal and just a little bit of the dry signal. So now the sides are more ambient and the center is more focused now, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this on guitar, although it sounds pretty good here. I'd recommend trying this out on things like synthesizers and, and anything where you can sort of experiment with the sound design more. On a traditional mix of like a band, for example, I wouldn't recommend using two different reverbs on the mid and side channels. But what's most important is getting the sound you like. So if you get the sound you like with this, great, go for it. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can also check me out at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for the support, and thanks for watching.